Hi there, uh, welcome to uh, the channel. Uh, it's Sam from the VXR collection. Um, so today didn't really uh, work out as originally first planned, as you're about to see. Um, so we got everything done that we needed to do, and it turned out a little bit more than what was originally planned as well. Um, but fortunately, it wasn't the end of the world, um, and we managed to do it, managed to rectify the problem within 40 minutes or so. It actually took longer to try and get through Bedford to go to Halfords to get the correct power steering fluid than it did to actually change it, which is, yeah, say no more. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, thank you for watching. Um, hopefully you enjoy the content you're about to see. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can subscribe and follow us and we'll put as much content on, on as we go. Um, so yeah, enjoy. All in all, uh, Sam from the VXR collection. Um, got a few things to do today to three of the fleet. Um, the insignia needs uh, the TPMS valve necks replacing because they're leaking. Um, the auto estate needs wheel balancing because it's got a little bit of a vibration. And P3, the project one, one of the exhaust clamps has uh, decided to be a bit naff. So uh, we're going to see if we can hopefully replace it um, however the um, sleeve on the back box has been replaced before so not sure how that's going to go but we'll, we'll try and figure something out but yeah that's today's missions um, so you're basically coming with us um, we are outside at the minute as you can see slightly different setting to where we started the last video um, I will oh, wait for the target first um, got the insignia with me so I just thought whilst it's here first time you guys have seen it do a bit of a walk around explaining all about it so here it is this is uh, the wife's new one it's uh, a mark one uh, for, sorry phase one mark one um, auto insignia vxr estate uh, we've had it just under a month now um, done a few bits and bobs to it but um, very very pleased with it overall so it's a lovely example um, yeah we've had just do usual wear and tear bits on it, so it's had four new tyres. Um, had to do the boot switch uh, button under here because they fail and just in con well normal form, water got into it and uh, it didn't work. So it needs to say the boot wouldn't electrically open on either the boot switch, the key fob or the door card, which is slightly frustrating. So I had to manually open it, pull down the uh, pull down the boot card and replace it um, but sure enough you know thanks to uh, shout out to one of the guys on one of the insignia forums that gave me the heads up on that so I think it was about 33 quid for a new switch so once that's been fitted um, sure enough the well I'm just pushing on the key now as you can see it comes straight to life so apologize the car is a little grubby it has been used this week so we changed the um, boot close button switch as well because that was starting to bubble on the little car logo but just a little bit anal about things like that but you know it's why not so the boot was still well, that button there was I think nine quid from um, Vauxhall Superstore so can't really grumble but yeah other than that had no real <coughs> issues with it at all so uh, mileage it's on just over 70,000 um, so uh, it's been used but why not? That's what these things are made for. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, what's it on? 70, 78, 76 hours currently on now. Um, but yeah, it's a um, really nice example. Very little damage or wear anywhere, which is great. Um, I say, and it's certainly a completely different driving experience to the Vectras. Um, so, yeah, very pleased with it. So, we've. Uh, <coughs> Done a few bits um, mechanically since we've got it because um, it previously had a ram air cone for apologies for the polish and the headlights done a little while ago i've not really had time to get under and clean it but it did have a um, cone filter on it which had been uh, removed and then the looked like the original air filter had been put in but badly so it needs to say this pipe here was near enough missing is um, a whole section of it was moved and it had got a tiny little cone on it so basically that was just flopping around doing nothing and all of the 
base mount points where it goes into the rubber grommets at the top and bottom were broken so the whole air box was just flapping around in the wind so needs to say that's been replaced replaced some pipe I had to get from Germany because I was really struggling to find one in the UK um, but other than that not really a lot um, <laughs> changed the screen wash cap ball lid because that was missing um, but no it's so it's just a you know standard 2.8 engine under here really so yeah overall apologies for the crocs and socks but just only walk around yeah very pleased with it so what we'll do now whilst i've got it while she's inside not listening um i'll do a cold start for you guys because i know you people have asked for cold start videos so i'll try and wedge you in such a way that you can hear the insignia cold start it is pretty bitterly cold this morning so you should hear these things start up but they do sound different to the vector when they start they uh very noticeably grumblier <laughs> but um, they soon settle down so there was a second and i will set you up so you can have a listen is cold start on the insignia vxr uh, you may hear a slight belt noise as well the auxiliary belt and tensioner needs well it looks like it's starting to be replaced it's only just started doing this noise in the last few days but just say it's on the to-do list so no doubt i'll be uh, doing a video on that at some point but yeah what a noise it does settle right down which no doubt it will do momentarily near enough nothing like the Vectra's. He says. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, as and when it gets off the air pump and uh, gets a little bit of heat, not a great deal obviously, through the various parts of the engine, it's happy enough that it throws off the air pump and it will just sit here making this lovely V6 hum. So yeah, here she is. So yeah, that's the Insignia. Um, but I will move on to the Project Vectra VXR, which I'll walk over to shortly and give you a bit of a walk around that. So here it is. Apologies if there's a bit of wind noise. It's a little bit breezy today. This is um, my 2008 280 uh, Arden hatchback, it's a manual, um, very grubby because it's been used all week, <laughs> but um, yeah, I used to say this one's got a little bit of an interesting history, um, the guy who owned it originally owned it for several years, done a lot of modifications to it, um, I used to say in its day it was a fantastic looking vehicle with the modifications that are done, done very subtly as well, um, however as time's gone on, um, age of plastics and just various bits and bobs um, it did look a little tired by the time I'd got to it um, apologies the van coming out <clears throat> so yeah basically what I've done since I've had it is um, go around and put it slowly back towards somewhat standard just to tone it back down slightly so the badges have been reapplied and so is the chrome strip on the boot lid um, <clears throat> a set of 18 inch snowflakes which we had kicking around from dad's black auto estate um, which we put a set of uh, brand new fire stones on um, a set of brand new rear calipers as well that have just been done um, idea suspension has been reinstated because it had coilovers on it which were unfortunately blown so that's some custom made um, gas 
Gax, I can't remember the um, shocks on it. Um, but unfortunately, they say that they it rode so hard when we picked it up. It was just common sense to put IDS back on it that was working and in decent condition. So needs to say the handling characteristics of the car totally changed in my opinion. Obviously, everyone's preferences are different. Um, however, you know, for me, this, it's back to how it was, and it's how I know the Vectra's drive. So um, just had the headlights polished as well. So these had um, headlight. Um, like eyebrow covers on it when we got it. Um, Storm, out of the road, come on, Steve. Apologies about that, Storm decided to come and join us. So he's now staring at me because he's sulking. Um, so yeah, it used to have um, eyebrows on top of the headlights. Um, however, I removed them and um, because the headlights were starting to fade. Um, so it needs to say the eyebrows are sold to a fellow member on the Vector VXR owners group. Um, the headlights have been repolished and they've come up fantastically well to be fair. You know, they're a little bit dirty but the actual, needs to say that there's no fade on them at all. So very pleased with them. Um, yeah, this one's got the near side back box. Um, it's slightly lower than the offside. Um, and it's just little things like this now, which is, is, is in a great position to be in. Bear in mind how much work's gone into this now. Um, it's just little things like this that are fine tuning just to make it right. Um, in two minds what I'm gonna be doing with it. Um, ideally, I'd like to sell it to someone who is just as equally interested in it, to be fair. Um, however, I appreciate the market is a little bit tough on these at the minute. So it's just sort of luck of the draw. So um, this one is stage two remat. Um, no cats. So it's a little bit feisty, and it needs a door strap, as you just heard. <clears throat> um, done a few miles, but it has been well used and well loved. 143,000s on now, or nearly 144. However, it did have chains in 2018. Um, <clears throat> obviously, a lot of this has been back, back to standard from how it was when I got it. It did have a, um, I believe it was an Android system in it, um, which I'm not massively into aftermarket head units. However. Uh, for me, it just didn't really work for the, for the car and for the aesthetic look inside. So, luckily, the original owner still had the CD70, um, which he kindly sent to me down in the post after I got the car home. So, it was just it was just a case of putting the cage back in, pulling all the uh, head unit and wiring harness out, uh, which was a mission, I must admit, because there was a lot of aftermarket wiring in here, and then putting it all back together. So, as you can see, it's pretty much how any other standard Vectra VXR or even Vectra at that matter um, appears when you get inside so there's a few subtle touches the VXR logos here and here and then up on the dash <clears throat> um, but overall so very very pleased with the car um, just done a drive shaft on it because it was uh, a bit knocky that's probably the nicest way of putting it um, however that's been replaced and that's now sorted so <clears throat> yeah it's um, a few little things to do I've still got to pull off the Vinyl wrapping that someone's put on around the door cards. Started to do it and then got pulled away and to do something else. So it's just silly little bits now, to be fair. So it drives, it drives fantastic now. I had a few issues originally with it over boosting and popping pipes off. However, replacement map sensor um, from a recommendation from our guru Lee Baxter. So I changed the map sensor and that sorted that. Um, and yeah, I've just done uh, an oil change on it as well. Because um, it was, yeah, it obviously been a, a few miles since it had done one last, so it sounds a little bit healthier now. But what I'll do is, like the insignia, I'll put you on the outside and I'll hear you cold start. Well, let you hear, sorry, put my teeth in, let you hear a cold start on it because it's a little bit feisty um, and I know some would appreciate it. Um, so bear with me and I'll just set you up.
does settle down a little bit, but not massively. So it is quite throaty this one. Um, but yeah, overall, good car. So it's done a few runs out with me to Northampton now to go to work. Um, it's a completely different animal to drive compared to the autos. Um, obviously it's running quite a bit more horsepower than the auto, so no surprise there. So here at STS Tire Pros and Biggles Wade, finally got the three Ardens together. So I'm seeking his waiting to have the um, TPMS valves done. Um, as you can see, hatchbacks having the exhaust work done and the estate is now having its wheel balancing done. So we'll update you in a bit. So here we have um, Saab 93 2.8 V6 turbo. This is actually one of my old cars, funny enough. Um, one of the guys that works here at Stapleton's Biggles Wade, um, he just wanted to buy it off me after he borrowed it, after I was doing some mechanical repairs on his. So 55 plates, it's the early tax bracket, so he's managed to get away with cheap tax on it. Um, but it is stage, I believe, one, possibly two mapped. No cats. So it is a bit of an animal and it's auto. So it's quite a nice pairing. Um, but yeah, being the aero pack as well, nice car. Yeah, it was um, just not being used. Um, so yeah, it's a nice example, it's still going strong. thing um, sort of come to a very abrupt end um, well other half wanted to go and get some boxes for the house move later on in the year um, and then we had to go get the auto hatchback back out um, so it's got the XMOT tomorrow that's also having a CD boot done um, however in the meantime it's decided it no longer likes its power steering so um, I'm going to to whip the bumper off um, and basically flush out the old power steering fluid. I appreciate there's probably better ways of doing it, however I've done it before on my dad's black auto estate. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna yeah basically do the same thing on this. Hopefully um, it will uh, reduce down the noise on the pump because the pump does not sound particularly happy at the minute. Um, so I'm hoping once we put some fresh fluid in it, get it all the way through the system, um, it will hopefully cure the issue um, because the power steering works however the noise and the body got us you can feel the vibration for the steering wheel which is quite common with old fluid so um, yeah here we go
all the clips are out. Okay, so what I've done previously on the black auto estate was I just cracked uh, this union bolt here into the sleeve um, and basically start the engine, let it run and then just simply cycle the steering from left to right um, whilst the engine's running on idle um, and then basically top the fluid up as and when you go. So hopefully we'll do the same again. turning the steering wheel from left to right and as you can see it's quite a nerd brown colour so that should go nice and clear shortly Do I get names in the video? Yeah Okay, so the um, changed the power steering fluid down now so it's a little over full at the minute but what I'm going to do is um, well, I've got to run it to the MOC station anyway, so hopefully the air will dissipate out. So I've basically nipped this uh, union nut up now, and as you can see, various different colours in the oil drainer itself. You've got this sort of murky brown nastiness, which is what was in the system, and then you've got this, as you can see, like a mossy green colour. So I think that's a blend of old and new. Um, but the fluid itself that's just gone in it is like a, a really dark green uh, which is the correct fluid for the 2.8 so what I'm going to do now is basically clean it all up um, refit the bumper and take it for a drive and make sure I'm happy with it but the noise has considerably reduced 95% or so and I'm sure once it's sat and the air is dissipated out it will be better so stay tuned so um, that's everything signed up. I've put the uh, power steering cap back on the reservoir up at the top. Fluid's about 75% full, which is I'm happy with because I'd rather air uh, dissipate down and then I can top it back up with fluid over the next few days. So I need to say I cracked the uh, union bolt off a little bit too far and it come firing out the side. <laughs> so always, always a school day. So what I'm gonna do now is put the bumper back on um, and then uh, well, I'll move the insignia out of the way and then uh, we'll take it for a drive. So bear with. So that's the bumper, that's the bumper refitted. I'm just gonna go around and put all the various screws and fix and points back in and clean up the drive a little bit. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, slowly get in there. Okay, so that's the bumper all refitted and all fixing back up. So now I'm just gonna move the fleet out of the way. So I can take it for a quick spin, just to make sure I'm happy that that vibration is totally gone. Um, I'm 99% sure it should be, but it's always best to test drive after something as unfortunate as this. But um, every, like I say, every day's a school day, so uh, just when you think the car is ready for MOT, and you prep it and you try and do everything to make sure it's fit and ready for, to, for the MOT tester, and then you get a lovely surprise in the true voxel fashion where it goes, hmm. Had enough of your power steering, I want some new fluid, thank you very much, and I want it now. Um, as soon as I reversed it onto the drive, I could just feel the steering wasn't right. Um, a lot of vibration, just needs to say, for the sake of 22 quid or whatever it was for a couple of litres of power steering fluid, it must be green. I've been told it must be green for the 2.8. Um, so, yeah, for the sake of 22 quid or whatever it was to flush a couple of litres through it, just to make sure it's got fresh fluid in it. Obviously that will prolong the life, the seals, all of the power steering system as much as it can. Um, it's a no-brainer really, isn't it? So yeah, 
let's get tidied up, clean a few of these bits and bobs away, and uh, yeah, we'll go for a drive. Apologies folks, the uh, camera cut off where it was resting, so uh, I didn't actually catch me pulling the uh, Vector off the drive, which is always helpful. So, blue cars everywhere, as you do. <laughs> so, just gonna take this for a quick blip. There's a bit of a local run that I do with some mechanical stuff, a couple of miles, just to make sure I'm happy that everything's behaving as it should. Um, so I'll try and take some snippets as I go. So bear with, and uh, catch you soon. Hi guys, right, back from the road test. I didn't catch it going back on the drive. However, um, happy with it. The vibration is gone, the noise is massively reduced. So yeah, overall, um, happy that the fluid flush has done its job. Um, so yeah, that's the auto crisis averted, thank God. Um, so now pulled the insignia back in front of it. Um, so a little bit of drama with these. So we ordered um, a TPMS valve stem kit uh, pack four however in true gm fashion it turns out that there's a couple of variants for these um, and these to say mine was the wrong one so uh, but it wasn't the end of the world because i managed to disassemble the ones that come in the kit um, and we've managed to change the seals on the original tpms valves uh, which were the problem um, and then we've basically built up the body with all new parts so this collar that basically screws on top of the valve itself um, they've had new valve cores and then the new cap so all of all four wheels were leak tested um, whilst we were at STS tyre pros um, and we're happy that it is now sealed so result um, that's now all done um, so yeah that's one big tick against the insignia because there's not really a great deal else to do with this I mean ideally we're going to do the wheels at some point and probably re and cut them However, um, yeah, there's a few more jobs on the pile first hand. Um, so yeah, insignia overall, we're happy. Um, ideally, we're gonna give these a clean in a minute or two because they're pretty minging. Um, and yeah, so P3, which we'll go over to now. Um, managed to um, change one of the, weirdly, um, one of the rubbers on the white piece on the back box itself. Um, the one on there was obviously stretched over time with age of the vehicle. So oh, hopefully you'll be able to see. So this Y piece here, um, basically what we've done, we've put uh, some new nuts on this exhaust clamp on the left hand side, because um, one of the, the nuts themselves were pretty naff and as you could tell they were knackered. Uh, but just in front of this Y piece, it looks just like a straight bar in between the clamps in front of you. Um, there's a rubber that makes it supports the weight of the boxes themselves. Um, so overall now I'm happy with the level of the exhaust pieces. They look right. They look pretty straight. This left hand one ideally could go a bit further this way. However, I don't think I'm going to get much more from the um, joining sections that's currently on there. So I might explore going to a stainless steel exhaust place and seeing if they could make it a little bit better. Uh, further down the line, but uh, overall it's sealed, it's tight, it doesn't move, which is what my main aim for today was. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. So that's basically today over and done with. I'm just gonna give them a wash, because this one particularly, as you can see with all the 
road grime and stuff on the bonnet it could do with a good clean so i'll be doing that shortly so thanks for joining me for today keep watching um, i'll put further content up as i go hopefully it won't be as sporadic as the power steer and flush on the auto hatch was could have done without that today but need to say can't really pick and choose when stuff like this happens so join me again soon and uh yeah thanks for watching bye for now